Tonight on Nightline, run for the border. They're so-called medical tourists in desperate search of a miracle cure in Mexico. But is the treatment for real? From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran in Washington, Martin Bashir and Cynthia McFadden in New York City, this is Nightline, February 6th, 2007. Good evening. The United States can claim to offer the best medical care in the world to those who can afford it. But that hasn't stopped some Americans from seeking alternative cures all over the world, even when the outcome is far from certain. Nightline's John Donvan reports from Mexico. It's just after sunrise in the small Mexican border town of Los Algodones, and already on the edge of town, the Americans are lining up. A group of mostly older and, in various ways, sick Americans who want to be there when the door finally opens at 8 o'clock to get a good spot on the day's waiting list. Put both of our names in the same one? No. They are there to get rid of it, whatever it is that ails them. Lung problems and cancer and MS and grinding pain, relentless grinding pain. Because only here, they believe, in the clinic run by a man that most know only as Dr. Diaz, can they get what they say they can't get back home. What will you do today? The stem cells. I take stem cells twice a year. Just keep me going. Okay. Stem cell okay. medicine. And you should have your stem cell and, and when I come back here in the end of the month. Everyone knows it's the new frontier where the medical miracles of tomorrow are supposed to come from. But these people believe you come to Dr. Diaz and you'll get your miracle today. Like Bonnie Good and her son, Rusty. I have the bad back, the bad knees, the bad shoulder, the bad neck. He gave me those shots and the pain was gone before I got up. It was wonderful. I couldn't hardly walk. It was a miracle. It really was. Everybody I talk to out here says the exact same thing. It's just, he's good. It's, can't beat him. They come here from all over the U.S., and even Canada. And something to understand about this town, Algodonas, Mexico. Yeah, it's a tourist town, but it's got one attraction, and it is cheap medicine and medical care. Americans come across the border all day long by car and on foot. Yellow apartments, the best price. Yellow is better than purple? Yes. So you've got Cipro? Yes. You've got Viagra? Penicillin? Yes. Penicillin? So far I've got uh, just walking 30 feet. Uh, in addition to an offer for a free beer and a margarita uh, at the pharmacy, uh, the yellow pharmacy, cut rate prices, uh, dental clinic, orthodontia work, crowns, and opticians. Prescription drugs at half the U.S. price and even less? No more than the California certified dentist here, folks. Algodonas is the mecca of medical tourism. Sounds going here. But then there is Dr. Diaz, full name Jose Diaz Barboza, originally a surgeon trained in Mexico and Cuba, and of course he knew that we had come there wondering whether he is a con man or a kook. But the thing is, once we sat down to talk in his garden, he seemed so rational and so unslick. <laughs> uh, once the dogs got locked up, he keeps about six of them at home. Anyway, the thing is, he just didn't put up much of a defense at all. If I went to a university, medical university in Mexico City and I told them what I saw you doing, mm -hmm. would they think that you're crazy? The most probable. Most of them would? Yes. And back in the States, most doctors there, they look Same at what you're doing, they think you're crazy. Yes. He just knows, he says, that injecting live cells into his patients seems to make most of them feel better, even if the science for it is shaky to non-existent. He believes the cells travel to damaged organs and help them to regenerate themselves, but as he readily admits, it's just a theory. But are you doing research on your patients? Yes. I mean, are you experimenting on your yes. patients? Yes. Is that ethical? Mm -hmm. We got up at 3 o'clock this morning. But you want to see someone really defend Dr. Diaz, Phyllis Pickrell in the waiting room. You're talking about 12 hours. Um, Waiting to get in here. About 14 hours 14. now. Is it worth it? You bet it is. Every minute of it. It's her lungs. They are damaged and get blocked up. But I was on oxygen for eight years before I came to Dr. Diaz. For eight years? For eight years. And within 15 to 20 minutes after I took my first stem cells, 
I was able to breathe, and I walked out of here without my oxygen. I carried the oxygen. She's been coming to Dr. Diaz for several years. When she came, she was really almost dying. She was really in bad, in bad condition. And everyone was scared, even the other patients. Today, Phyllis was here for a booster shot. You always fix me up, Phil. I do my best. Yes, you do. <laughs> you do good. But a couple of things came to mind as we watched this. First of all, word may be out that Diaz is shooting people up with human stem cells, itself not scientifically proven safe or effective. But in fact, most of his patients are not getting the human stem cells that he gives only to the most dire cases. Most patients get sheep cells, live sheep cells. There is a mistake. Uh, it's not the, the right name. This is live cell therapy. Again, no argument from Diaz about this. He just thinks some patients are a little confused by all the news about stem cell research. When they read the newspaper, they see the TV programs, or they go, cells here, oh, it should be stem cells. So they all think it's stem cells? Yeah, when I, when and, it's, it's, and it's not? No, it's not stem cells. Do you ever tell them it's not yes, a stem Yes, always. Indeed, Phyllis herself seemed to understand that what was going into her body was not human. I have never gotten humans. You're getting lambs. I'm getting yeah. lambs. Does it seem strange to be putting lambs? Does it seem strange to you that your body is taking in stem cells from lambs? In the beginning, I felt very strange to think that they were going to put a lamb in my body. But since then, I, I never give it a thought. I just know that it works, and I'm perfectly willing to let him do it. Maybe, though doctors we spoke with later predicted the immune system would simply attack animal cells and destroy them, making them pointless. Those doctors had some concern that animal cells could actually be harmful. Then the checkbook came out, $908 for Phyllis's course of treatment, none of it reimbursable by insurance, she told us. Yet again, Diaz yields the point. Phyllis, who came down, she wrote you a check, I think, for $904, $908. Now, how much of that do you get to keep? Where's your problem? that money, like uh, $150. That, says Diaz, is after the cost of paying staff and paying for the actual cells. So not unbelievable money for a doctor, especially given that he spent at least 45 minutes with every patient listening to their problems, something he says doctors today should do more of. They don't, they are, they don't interact with the patient. Gradually, it's more and more, more cold, the relationship between the patient and the doctor. And maybe that's it. Maybe that's why patients like this, who told me she could barely walk before Dr. Diaz's treatment let her dance across the waiting room floor, maybe it is all psychological. The placebo effect, it is called. Patients feel better because they think they're getting something special. One final time, Diaz concedes. It's a good question. It's a good, good question. And maybe the answer would not be good for me. Because that could mean he'd be out of business. And what we did not hear from were people who have been hurt by Dr. Diaz, who could be out there if, as some doctors think, what he's doing is not only untested, but could actually be dangerous. But then those people wouldn't be in this waiting room. And so it goes in Algodones, because people will always be sick. And for now, Dr. Diaz is there. And whether he is helping people or harming them, science cannot say for sure. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Los Algodones, Mexico. The desperate search for cures. Our thanks to John Donvan.